Hi there and welcome to the second part of this Django Ninja tutorial series. In this video we're going to extend our API to um, include some real endpoints that fetch data from the database for the music track data that we loaded in in the first video. So what we're going to do in this video is going to create uh, an endpoint that will allow us to get all of the music tracks. We're also going to create a detail endpoint that takes an ID and retrieves that the music track with that ID. And we're also going to look at how to use query parameters to do filtering. So let's get started with that. We're going to create some real endpoints here using Django Ninja. So the first thing I'd like to do is outline what endpoints we're going to create. Um, so what we have here from the blog post, we have a API slash tracks endpoint that will get all of the tracks from the database. We also have an API slash tracks slash track ID endpoint which will get you an individual track in the database by its ID. Now that will maybe not exist as well so we have to think about that when we're designing this API. So what we need to do first is create a file called schema.py and this is going to um, host something called a pedantic schema. Now Django Ninja is very inspired by Fast API and it, these both these libraries use another library called Pydantic. So let's have a quick look at the documentation for Pydantic. It's a data validation and setting settings management library that uses Python type annotations. So you can think of these as being quite similar to Django models in a way, um, but they're not used to interface with a database. They simply define the structure of data that you're working with and they use type annotations to do that. So for example, here you have a Pydantic um, user class which extends the Pydantic base model that's directly imported there and you can see that you have fields which have names ID name and these ball these both have data types as well they have an int data type for the ID there's a string data type for uh, John Doe that's implicit and you can also provide default values as this one does here and you also have things like optional fields such as the sign up timestamp that's an optional date time um, which defaults to none if it's not provided and you can have lists and other data types as well um, a lot of this can come from the Python typing module so Pydantic gives you a way of defining these schemas and this is what's used by Django Ninja and indeed by Fast API in order to return responses so what we're going to do is copy this code into a schema.py file so let's create that in our tracks application schema.py and we'll create this code here. So what we have is a track schema that's going to define the response, the JSON response structure for each track in the database. And again, this um, extends the Ninja schema, which is basically the Pydantic base model. And you have type annotated fields, title, artist, duration, and last play. The last play is a date time field. We're importing the date time object from the date time library. It's a bit of a mouthful. And we also have an, another schema getting defined here, which is the not found schema. Now this relates to the fact that if you're searching by a track ID, that ID might not exist. So you have to return an alternative response. You can't return a track because it doesn't exist with that ID. So instead we define a second schema, which is the not found schema. So I'll save that and in api.py we're going to bring in these new files. So from models, from api.models, so it's tracks.models, sorry. We'll import the, in the database model. This is the Django model called track. And from schema, from tracks.schema, we can import the track schema and also the not found schema. Now we can use these, and I'm gonna get rid of this test endpoint. Um, that was just to demonstrate how to do that. And we're gonna define another get endpoint. And this one's going to be for tracks. So it's API slash tracks and we will call the function tracks and that will take in the request object. Now what we want to do here is we want to return basically a JSON serialized um, representation of all of the tracks in the database. So it will be track.objects.all. What we can actually do here is we can use something called response um, as a second parameter to the decorator and then we can define what 
the structure of our response objects is going to be. And it's going to be a list of track schema objects. We're basically returning, on this endpoint, we're returning all of the tracks we've got in the database. So I need to import from the typing module um, the list object. And we re return the response, which is a list of track schemas. Now what that's going to do, we have here a bunch of Django models. And the schema is going to look for these fields within the model and it's going to return them. And these fields do exist on our model, as you can see here, title, artist, duration, and last play. And the schema.py will convert to the right data types after pulling the data out of the database and will return it without any need for um, any serializer classes like you have in Django REST framework. This will do this automatically for you. So if I save that, um, and we can go to this URL now. And we should now get a JSON serialized list of all of the tracks in the database. But of course, we first need to start the Django development server. So let's do that just now. Python manage.py run server. May not be in the right directory here, but so I'll cd into the right directory and run that command. This will start the server and then we can look at this particular URL that we've just defined. And you see we get a big block of text, a big block of JSON data back here and that's all of the tracks in our database. And we could probably see this a bit more cleanly using uh, Google Chrome because we have uh, an extension on Chrome here. And you see we get a bunch of different tracks. Um, I'm not sure how many there are. Looks like there's 2,668 tracks here. So now what we want to do now is define a second endpoint. We want to look up a track by its ID. So we're going to use something called path parameters to do this. And the endpoint is going to be tracks, as we had before. And now we're going to add a path parameter, which we do by enclosing it in these curly brackets here. That's going to be track ID. And to that, we will define the response. And what we're going to do, the response this time, which is, remember, the second parameter to the decorator, it's not going to be a list. It's going to be um, potentially a track, an individual track, or it's going to be the not found schema because of course when you're looking up by ID it might not exist. So if it's a 200 response we're going to return a track schema object and if it's a 404 not found response we will return a not found schema. So that's how you do that. You can define multiple response structures um, using Django Ninja. And this one we'll just call track singular and it will take the request but it will also take a track ID here which is um, an integer and what we're going to do is we're going to try looking up the track by its ID that's going to be track.objects.get and it's going to be the PK the ID it being equal to the track ID and then if we find that track we can just return it because we've defined what the uh, response is going to be here and now we write the accept block and just make this explicit as the track dot does not exist exception and in this case what we're going to do is return a 404 response along with the not found schema and that's going to be a message and let's just say track does not exist here and for this one it will be a 200 response and the track itself this is just a simple dictionary which will be serialized as JSON and it's got a key called message which matches what we have here in our schema and it's a string value. On the other hand, the track is an instance of the track schema, not a list as we had before, just a single instance. So if we go to tracks and let's pick a random one from the top here. I don't actually know the IDs here so I'm going to guess one. Let's say five. And we get Lady Gaga back for that one. And if we give one that doesn't exist, then we get the message track does not exist, is, which is what we expect here. So the next thing we want to do is to have a look at how we can use query parameters. Now a query parameter allows you to do things such as, let's say we had the following endpoint, localhost 8000 slash API slash tracks. That would get you all of the tracks as we defined here. But you might want to say, give me only the tracks whose title begins with A. So you might say title equals a in that case. So what we can do is define a query parameter and the way that Django Ninja does that is it basically as you can see here the track ID is a path parameter. Now that would mean that the 
the ID is contained directly within the URL, such as that. Now anything after that, any other parameters that are passed to the function are treated as if they were query parameters. So for example, if I then said title equals A, you could then accept a second argument here called title, and that would be equivalent to the query parameter. It would look in the URL to find a query parameter with that particular key. So I'll get rid of that there because we're going to do this on the tracks endpoint. We want to filter all tracks and we want to only get tracks that begin with a certain letter where the title begins with a certain letter. So what I'm going to do is accept a second query parameter here. And it's going to be title and that is going to be equal to, um, we'll, we'll type hint this again, it's going to be an optional string because we don't always provide a title. By default there is no title and we return all of the tracks but it's an optional string which defaults to none. And from the typing module, I'll import optional. So what happens now is we can check if title exists. So if title, what we're going to do is we're going to return track.objects. And in this case, we're going to filter. We're not going to return all of them, but we're going to filter where the title key contains um, the title that is provided in the URL. So if we go back to our endpoint here, tracks, let's say I say title equals A. That will give us all titles that contain an A and you see we've got ain't nobody here. So if I change that to ain't, we get all of the tracks that have ain't in the title. And you can see that there are quite a few here. So, um, you know, you can change that to anything you want. But that's how you use a query parameter in Django Ninja. You simply provide a, um, an argument to the function and then anything that's not a path parameter, it will look at the other arguments and find whether or not that key exists in the URL and it will treat it as a query parameter. And you can then do whatever you want with that. So this is a very simple mechanism to uh, filter down your data and you could use similar parameters to do sorting. In Django REST framework, these are provided as attributes on the API views. Here, it's a different mechanism. It's a bit simpler in my opinion, but both are good ways to do this. So that's how you do some filtering with, um, with Django Ninja. And I think that's about it for this video. So thank you for watching. In the next video, we're going to build a full CRUD API and we're going to show you how you can and add endpoints to create objects, to update objects, and to delete objects in the database. We're also going to show how Django Ninja gives you some automatic documentation as well. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and see you in the next video.